America. It's the land of the free, the land of mass consumption and mass retail. But across the country, an awakening. Someday there isn't going to be this. You know, it's going to be all corporate America. No one's going to know what mom and pop is like. No one's going to know what customer service is like. It's, it's just all going to be one big square box. They walk into their old downtown and half of it's boarded up and then they go out into the outskirts and it looks like every other town they've ever been in with one big box, one big chain after another. So not only do you rob a community of its money, but you also rob it of its soul. You know, the place that springs up that has, that is kind of faceless, that looks the same in every city, inside and outside, that you know, you could wake up in one, you'd have no clue were you in Texas or Iowa or wherever. When I came here, there was two stores open. There was about uh, almost 2,000 people here. There's 600 people here now. All the business closed up. The retail market there, the, the, the grocery stores closed up. Over the last decade, 11,000 independent pharmacies shut down, as did 40% of the nation's independent bookstores. 100 chain restaurants capture nearly half of the average American's budget when they dine out. Borders now dominates the national retail book market, with over 1,000 locations bolstered by its partner, Amazon.com. Starbucks has nearly 7,000 coffee shops across the country, with 1,300 more by 2007. In some cities, you'll find several at one single intersection. And Walmart, the world's largest retailer, America's richest corporation, keeps growing with close to 4,000 stores and 4,000 more by 2010. Um, let's say we lost GE, Chicago Nomadic Tool, we lost Bendix, we lost the base. We have a Walmart in Rome, we have a Walmart in New Hartford, we have a Walmart in North Utica, we have three Walmarts. A seismic shift in the economy splits shopping into a national pastime and a political act. We started because of the war, and we said, we don't have a vote up there. They're going to do whatever they want to do. Our real vote today in America is with our dollars. Lights. Camera. <laughs> Action. Hanson Hussein and Heather Hughes are packing up what it takes to shoot a television documentary. 52 days on the road in the USA to find independent America. Two former journalists, one an award-winning international reporter accustomed to covering wars and disasters, the other a television news anchor. Together, this married couple embarks on a homespun journey. They identify communities where mom and pop are taking on big box America but they also rely on chance encounters to guide them through their marathon trip, always abiding by two rules. One, they can only do business with mom and pop. No McDonald's, no Best Westerns, no Walmarts. Two, they must steer clear of all interstate superhighways. Instead, they travel on secondary roads. You can't beat the old secondary highways. Uh, if you want to see how American people live, and the real life, everybody's a lot friendlier. It's a slower pace. And currently, a staging ground for a deep and not so silent movement on the march, waging war against big business and the corporate machine. People are beginning to see the hidden price. There's the price on the tag, and then there's a much bigger sticker. Walmart um, descended upon our town and basically bought the election. It was offensive to me that they were coming in across the street and I wanted to see if there was something I could do about it. It's definitely caused a lot of animosity in the community. They've been vandalized on multiple occasions. Our attorney has advised us that there will be no comment of any kind concerning uh, retailers of any kind. Walmart! Big, Big box. box! They almost would laugh at us. Corporate America just kind of hung up on us. <laughs> it's a battle, not only between David and Goliath, but between two strong ideologies, both woven into the fabric of independent America. I'm a true American, I love my country, but I fear what Walmart <laughs> will do for me and my community. And so you literally start to create this elitist economy simply because you have a disconnect with the philosophy of corporate America and they have the ability to pay their workers wages 
which would not require government and taxpayers to be subsidizing the health insurance cost of their children. They just refuse to do so for the sake of profits. Most of the criticism that you hear about Walmart is part of a very expensive campaign that's fueled by the unions. Make no mistake about that. A lot of people don't understand how I can be anti-corporate chain and you know, also Republican at the same time. This isn't a left or right issue. This is a community issue. When you're not beholden to a large corporation or centralized power like a government, then you're really free to live the kind of life that you want. An American life unchained by corporate retail. I have, I've eaten things all over the world, but you can't get any better than dip dogs and onion rings, I'm telling you. The reason why we're here. Uh, the dip and dow, dip and dow. You take a bite? Well, you think it's safe? Local is a way right now of people taking back control. In a world that seems out of control, they at least know they can choose a locally owned business, they can talk to the owner, they can learn more about what they're bringing into their home, about what kind of food that they're eating, and that it's become very, very important to folks to feel some authenticity to life, something real. Independent America, it's a way of life.